Radio guys, so I've got all the masking done. I'm all suited up, got the government edition spray suit on, and we're ready to start splashing some color down. Well, just about, we just gotta give it a prep sole, and well, I couldn't find my tack rag, so I'm gonna use microfibers instead. Uh, they actually work pretty good, but it's not like we're gonna get a clean job no matter what happens. Uh, we're still gonna do our best, but I'm not expecting a clean job. Um, but if it was in a booth, Hell yeah, it would come up really nice. But you might notice I've got that headlight on my head. That's probably gonna come in handy for when we're specifically down the back here. Um, oh yeah, it's actually quite a high powered light that we've got there, so that'll be good. So for the rest of this video, I'll be doing a bit of a voiceover. That's because I'll be wearing my respirator, so it makes the, um, the audio a little bit muffled. But hope you guys have been enjoying the series up to here. Um, I've definitely enjoyed making the, these videos and doing this job. It's been a bit of fun. Uh, I was actually quite surprised and impressed with the quality of the results on this job here. Now, I'm not going to try and make out as if it's spray booth level or anything, but for a garage paint job, I'm actually pretty ha happy with how it's come along. And I'm well kitted out, I've got everything I need. Um, and another thing that I was actually surprised about is how fast I was able to do the job. Like I wasn't really slowed down that much by the fact that I'm at home. And a big part of that is because I'm so well kitted out. Um, but even things like this, the base coat, like uh, I obviously ordered in some solvent based base coat. It's PPG, I think it's called Deltron, yeah you know just ppg deltron um and even it dried really fast like it wasn't even a warm day so when i was painting this it was probably like 17 degrees celsius um and i barely had to wait more than five minutes if that between coats of base coat um and then i was straight onto the clear coat like pretty much all i needed to do was give the base coat gun a quick clean out and by the time I had that cleaned out and the clear coat mixed up, I was right to go. Another thing that I was really happy with was the compressor and I'll be doing a review on that now that I've sprayed a large job like this. I've wanted to do a review on my compressor for a while now, um, but I wanted to do this job before I did that review, um, just so that I knew how well um, it held up. But it's held up really well. So the air cap that I'm using on my Pro Light, so the gun is a, a Pro Light to build this, um, and it's got a 1.3 mil fluid tip on it, but it's got a, a T110 air cap. So that's the air cap out of the Pro Lights that consumes the least amount of air. And as you're about to see here, we've got a crash landing about to happen. We got our first crash landing. So obviously that was like a a little moth or something like that so um, being that that was on like my first or second coat of base coat oh yeah it was it was the first coat of base coat I was sort of um, expecting okay, I was like okay we're in for um, a pretty horror paint job um, but as we continued on there was nothing that major like there actually was another little bug that did land in the clear coat overnight but I think it's gonna polish out the worst of it will polish out anyway so it's one of those things like when you're painting at home in the garage you're probably not going to be expecting you know uh showroom finishes you're not expecting like the best of the best so yeah as i say like this car here when it came in it was my friend's car for starters um i'm barely even charging him i'm basically just charging him for materials um and yeah so he's not expecting perfect results you know it doesn't have to be perfect but yeah, I was actually pretty happy with how it all came up. So, as I was going to say before, is that I was really happy with how the compressor held up, and I will definitely be doing a review. So this is, yeah, the, the T110, which is the developer's cap that uses the least amount of air. So, I'm actually pretty confident that this compressor could even run the TE20, which is the air cap that I use um, at work. Um, another thing that I, I might not have made a mention to in some of the previous videos is um, when you're working from home, you should also try to rely on your compressor as little as possible. So that's why I use a orbital sander that's electric rather than an air powered one. But yeah, the compressor I've got, it's called Hush 100, so H-U-S-H 100. And it's got like three silent electric one horsepower motors on them. So 
that's another really good thing about using it at home is that it's really quiet because um, going into this garage, I, like that's one thing that I was really um, you know conscious of is not annoying the neighbors, um, not having odors and not having excessive noise. So having a quiet compressor is really, really good. Look, this compressor is gonna get like two massive thumbs up. And it turns out that after I bought it, like two or three weeks after I bought it, it actually ended up going on sale. So um, it, I already thought it was pretty reasonably priced. It was like $1,400 I got it for. I think it went down to like $1,200 or $1,100. Like it was a de decent price drop on it. But that's about it for this vid there, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And if you have, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Um, in the coming weeks, uh, we're going to have the clear coat stage and later on, I'm actually going to get the car back. I'm going to cut it all back and then polish it all up and I'm actually going to put a ceramic coating on it. So be sure to stick around for those and until next time, get out there and paint some shit coming out.